Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. A UAV operator is found not guilty of unlawful surveillance. Base jumpers beat the burglary charge. A pilot invented app warns of flight delays. I'm Brie Cross, it's June 26, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The murky legal waters surrounding UAV photography can be roughly broken into two categories. First, there is the issue of operations in the national airspace system, which falls under federal regulations. Second, we run into civil laws, which can be varied and cover many issues, privacy being one of them. David Biesmer had been arrested in 2014 after capturing video of the outside of a medical building in the town of Ulster. Biesmer said he knew that the camera on the quadcopter would not be able to see into the windows of the Mid-Hudson Medical Group building, but also admits that it was a huge error in judgment to aim the camera at exam rooms in the building. Biesmer was charged with two counts of attempted unlawful surveillance. The first trial ended in a mistrial, and the second trial, the jury returned a verdict of not guilty. Prosecutors had framed the incident as video voyeurism. Here's another aerial legal case that also involved the leveling of criminal charges. Three base jumpers who leapt from the top of the One World Trade Center in September 2013 have been acquitted of the most serious charge leveled against them, but were found guilty of lesser charges associated with the stunt. Last week, a jury agreed that the trio had not committed felony burglary, a charge which could have carried a seven-year prison term. But they were found guilty of the lesser charges of reckless endangerment and base jumping, both misdemeanors. In a news release, the Manhattan District Attorney said that the three were convicted following a trial in New York State Supreme Court of reckless endangerment in the second degree, base jumping, and reckless endangerment of property. The sentencing will occur in August. Meanwhile, the base jumping community is trying to help the three out with their legal bills by initiating a funding drive. After the break, a new app tells you of flight delays ahead of time. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Now when your flight is delayed, you can find out and be mad about it even before you arrive at the airport. An app developed by a group of pilots is putting airport delay information right in the palm of your hand on your iOS device. AeroWatch, which was just released by Post River Software, tracks airport delays and stoppages at all commercial airports in the U.S. Data is retrieved directly from the FAA servers. Airports are listed with red or green indicators to let the user know if flights are being delayed at any given airport. The data is sorted by region so that users can narrow their search and not display every airport in the country. The app is compatible with the iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. It's Friday, and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim talks about ANN's updated mission, which is to inform, inspire, innovate, and perhaps be a little disruptive. Well, more than just a little. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Bree, and hi, folks. Well, to make a long story short, we are now 20-some-odd days out of Oshkosh, and boy, are we in prep mode. 
But one of the things that's become more and more obvious to us is that aviation is at quite the crossroads. And to a certain extent, we've decided to recraft our own mission statement in order to reflect not only what we must do, but we think the industry must do. And here it is, four simple words, inform, inspire, innovate, and disrupt. Very simple, uh, aviation needs more and a better quality of information. It needs a freer flow of information, and it needs to be far more honest, and the information has to come with greater integrity. We'll get into that at another time. We need to inspire. Aviation is a bit down in the dumps. We're having a tough time. There's no question that everybody knows it, feels it, doesn't like it, and it is dragging down the industry. But if we're going to get ahead, if we're going to be innovative, if we're going to start trying to excite new activity, we've got to not only inspire, but be inspired. We need to innovate. It will never be 1979 again. We will not build old Skyhawks the way we used to in the numbers that we did. But an iPlane, something new, or an iCub, or an iHawk, or whatever you want to call it, a next generation aircraft for a next generation industry, that's something we could do. There's so much innovative thought going on that if it were a bit better focused and frankly allowed to range a bit more freely and a bit more aggressively, amazing things could happen. We're seeing the tip of the iceberg, the electric airplanes, even hybrids now. There's no question that uh, a lot of aggressive change needs to take place, but innovation, innovation will be the savior of aviation and it will happen. It just may not happen soon. We can do a lot to excite it, but most important, let's understand that the main thing that aviation needs beyond innovation is the most beneficial aspect of innovation itself, disruption. We can't keep doing the same old thing. You've heard me go time and time and time again, but the worst enemy of aviation is the saying, well, that's the way we've always done it. Disruption through innovation, through inspiration, and through information and integrity in that information and free flow, well, that creates a whole new industry. We're seeing bits and pieces of this uh, as we prepare for Oshkosh. Our Air Venture Innovation Preview had 99 applicants for 30 slots. It was extraordinary how well that did, and it's inspired us to bigger and better things and bigger and better ways to communicate the wonders, the value, and the future of aviation. Join us. See you at Oshkosh in a little bit over three weeks. We'll be there. Stop on by. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, counting down the days. After these messages, a Boeing 737-NG simulator is going to Thailand. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Pan Am International Flight Training Center in Thailand has selected Lockheed Martin to provide it with a Boeing 737 NG full flight simulator. They say the demand for pilot training in the Asia-Pacific region is growing at an unprecedented rate. The Columbus, Ohio Division of Police will upgrade four of the aviation unit's six MD-500E helicopters to the new MD-530F variation. Since its inception in 1972, their helicopter unit has flown an average of 16 hours a day, 
seven days a week. Ericsson Aviation has renewed national wildland fire suppression contracts with the United States Forest Service and other municipalities. The company has contracted with the U.S. Forest Service for 34 consecutive years. Twelve aircraft will be deployed in North America. The Allstate Insurance Company has received approval from the FAA to allow them to fly unmanned aircraft to research property claims made by its customers. Drones could be used when physical access to the area is limited or restricted. Quest Aircraft Company has received type certification for their Kodiak utility airplane from the Civil Aviation Authority of Namibia, Africa. They also received certification from the Russian Interstate Aviation Committee, which includes the 11 Commonwealth countries. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. George Neal, a career de Havilland Aircraft of Canada test pilot and amateur aircraft builder, has been named in the Guinness Book of World Records as the oldest active, licensed pilot on Earth at 96 years and 194 days as of his qualifying test flight, June 2, 2015. Joining de Havilland on a permanent basis in 1947, Neal participated in the certification of many aircraft types, including commanding many first flights. Neil has logged more than 15,000 hours on 150 aircraft types. Neil flies his own chipmunk from Brampton Airport on the outskirts of Toronto. Following his record-setting qualifying flight from Brampton to Pearson International Airport, where the chipmunk was put on display for the 2015 induction gala of Canada's Aviation Hall of Fame, the Guinness Record application was put forth by the chairman of the Hall of Fame. After seeing this report, ANN's Jim Campbell was quick to point out that he is well past the halfway mark to breaking this record. We will keep you posted. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a wonderful weekend. We will see you on Monday.